What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. I'm Scott Beer, Cold Beer Enthusiast. And we are here at Bellwoods at Hathis Road. Hathis Road. Hathis Road. Hathis Road. Nearly got it. Um, we're meeting with Luke, the uh, the owner, and we are super excited. As y'all know, we are uh, uh, little fanboys. I guess, fanboys, you can call it that, yeah. So, you know, we're going to be drinking hazy beers hopefully all day today. All day. Um, we out here. Yeah, looking forward to it. Let's get it done. Let's do it. <laughs> Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead. And I am Scott Beer, Cole Beer Enthusiast. And welcome to episode 50 of Beer and Other Shit, the podcast. And today, uh, we are like kids in a brewery. I guess. Kids we are here. Kids are no? I love kids at the brewery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I absolutely feel I'd never leave home without our it. Our beards are our ID. That's all. I'm going to great, bro. Um, so here with uh, Luke Pessel, which is the co-founder, not the founder, co-founder and uh, brewer of Bellwoods in Toronto. So if you have paid any attention to us at all, you have absolutely heard us rambling on about these guys. Mate, thank you for... Uh, for being with us today. Thanks for having us, Fantastic. Man. Thanks for having yeah. me. <laughs> pleasure. Well, well, the pleasure is ours. So we're here at the, uh, how do you say it? Hafus Road. Hafus. Hafus. I don't know why I found that right. Yeah. I'm getting it's pretty easy. Uh, There's like <laughs> five letters in it. It's <laughs> but it's like a Hafus. 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 That's what I called it, and then I was corrected. Yeah. Hafus. It is. Uh, it's like 50-50. Sure. I think I stumbled over for a yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> but you got there eventually. Yeah. So this is the uh, new production brewery. Yes, well, we're in the warehouse behind the production brewery, I guess. Right. It's a little quieter out here. So we still got some barrels there. Um, Barrels, beer, everything. So I think first and foremost, we want to we'll get started. We'll crack a beer, and then I want to go into your uh, your deal. So which one Sounds do we want good. to go first? So yeah, let's do Jutsu, sure. Yep. Jutsu? So, yeah, Jutsu. I agree. Way to go. May you do the honors, sir. Sure. Okay. So the, uh, you know, I'm not going to talk about the other beer. Yet. Yeah, yeah, we're not. Gonna... <laughs> so why are you pouring, Luke? Um, people will see that this is a super hazy beer, and this is probably one of the reasons that uh, Scott and I. Mm -hmm. You get Tiff? Young yeah, Tiffany? Look at that. Taken uh, care of. Um, the haziness of, of this particular beer. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always this way, was it? Uh, Jutsu, well, we, when we started brewing it, we, we always used the same yeast, actually. Okay. Um, like a Vermont ale yeast. And uh, it wasn't initially hazy, and we some batches were, some batches weren't. We were just sort of deciding how to... How, what we wanted it to become, and everybody complained. But, well, not everybody. Some people still complain that it's hazy, but most people complain? wanted it. Complain. Yeah, most people want it to be a, a <laughs> hazy juice bomb like the New England Pale Ale. So right. it uh, it became that. And, and you delivered we're because quite that's happy with it, so. uh, exactly. But, it, but like you said, it, was it a clear? Was it clear? Uh, at one point, it was briefly. Um, yeah. And we quickly abandoned that. Yeah. And but um, people complain and, then, or they complain when it. Well, we get both this. sides. So we we did it. We had a really hazy batch, and then we had a clearer batch. And a guy complained that he had to drive all the way here, and and he complained that he had to drive and get this garbage, and it was like a clear beer. And he's like, "Wow, I wanted a ha juicy haze." Right, bomb. I drove all this right. way for I'm, haze I'm wasting bomb, my time yeah. and my money. You guys are brutal. Uh, <laughs> he so, knows what's up. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Does. <laughs> so I mean, you know, and it was largely what we were feeling too. It's and you know, I do feel like it's like a, it gets. Juicier, it feels juicier. The, like the aroma is wicked. Yes. The haze just sort of adds to that like texture. And now this isn't going to be released till June, July. The but um, recently you released uh, Double Jutsu, correct? Yeah. Uh, did you do anything special to that beer? Um, to uh, make it it's pretty much the be, uh, just scaled rip, up. Rip Jutsu, up the same. ABV. We kept the hops the same, and um, we we have the dry hop a little bit, and uh, the, the dry hop on Jutsu already is huge. So yeah. It's, it's, um, is it like a higher ABV then? By uh, double just yes, yeah. yeah. Yep. So we, we just increased the right. malt overall, right. and, yeah, bumped cool. it up. So, so it's, this is a pale. And Still try to keep the IBUs low and, right. and the juice character up, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, cheers. It looks lovely. Cheers. Cheers. cheers, yeah, cheers, cheers. It's disgusting. It's That's so good. I love this so much, dude. It, is there lupulin powder in this? No, not in this. Why does it taste chalky? Uh, or am I well, crazy? I think the haze, like you, yeah. you, get, you yeah. get the texture off the, the proteins and the yeast, and okay, and that's what makes the haze. In I this think it's a combination. Game. It's not all yeast, definitely not. Okay. Um, I would say most of it. I'm, I'm not actually positive, but I, in, I would think most of it's proteins. Okay. Um, when we up our uh, Irish moss additions in the kettle, the haze falls out and uh, very quickly. So I think it's um, the hop oils contribute, the hop yeah. the hops contribute, the yeast that's contributes, fantastic. the proteins contribute. Yep. Would, would you yeah. say haze is just an aesthetic thing, or does it really add to the flavor and mouthfeel and texture? I, I think well? it totally changes the flavor. Yeah, I, agree. I mean, it does for the better. 
It depends what you're looking for. Preference, yeah. Subjective. That's true. Yeah. Uh, um, you mentioned something to me recently about you heard that um, some breweries add flour to. Yep. Admittedly, beef. openly. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And we, we had a flour to milkshake okay, actually cool. as well. Um, so it's not a bad thing then? No, I, I don't think so. It's just I mean, a, some like a, my, we, we don't add flour to the jutsu and to most of our hazy beers. Okay. Like, the, like runes, uh, really hazy as well, and we don't add flour. Um, we did add it to Milk Shark, and that gets to a whole other um, story, and it was really largely inspired by Omni Polo and Tired Hands and the beers. It was uh, Omni Polo right. who was saying that they added... Uh, the, was the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's sort, of, okay. uh, that's sort of like, I think their intention was to sort of... You know, they were getting criticized for having hazy beers and, right. you know, making fun. It's like, to right. poke the bear, sort of like, like hey. let's make it really hazy. <laughs> just to annoy right your face, yeah. But, in the, uh, but apparently, one of our brewers just pointed out to me that in like an old history, history brewing book, um, it's, uh, I believe in British mm-hmm. brewing, they would historically, ages ago, would add flour to like give beer its like bright character, like its bright white character. So they were oh. looking for specifically flour in the boil. Um, to, and hmm. which would give it like a haze, and, right? Like, so it's nothing new, really. And, right. You know, that, it, it's just a trend. It does look cool, right? So it looks amazing. Historically, like, yeah, somebody would come out with beer like that and be like, "Yeah, I think that looks cool." And you know, the trend, the trend changes, and then England's in, interested in clear beer, right? So crystal that, clear. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. It just, it just trends change. I do want to go heavy into this, but I feel like we should get the history first. Okay. So, can you give us a breakdown on your beer history, maybe, and when you got into beer, how you got into brewing, and then, of course, how this incredible place started. Uh, so I didn't. I was. I enjoyed craft beer. I started as a beer fan, right. I guess. Like um, most people. Like most yep. people, yeah. And uh, I mean, I was beer always sort of interested me. I, even like as a kid, my, I would collect bottle caps, and like my dad was. Would, he'd buy. What, I remember going to the store, and he would let me pick what he was going to drink. Nice. So he'd go to, he'd go to the <laughs> beer store. That's, cool. that's really cool. And I'd, I would just then... pick the ones with the cool bottle caps. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but it, like they used to be able to like, grab and pick like bottles from at the beer store and. You'd let me do that, so like I, from then I always remember like um, enjoying the culture of it, and like it just seemed cool to me. And you know, I started trying beers as uh, you get older, and started sneaking beers and whatever. And uh, in university, I went to biochemical engineering, and it was always in the back of my head that that might be a good way to like use that degree. And I, to be honest, I never really wanted to be an engineer. But uh, I needed to go to school and do something, so I did that. A lot of people do, yeah. As, uh, started, as many people drinking, do. Like, Unibrew exactly. and yeah. university. And like, yes. I remember having Unibrew for the first time. I was like, yeah, this is great. Crazy. This is crucial yeah. crazy stuff. And then, uh, so left there, couldn't get a job. Tried to get a job at Amsterdam. Tried to get a job at uh, Steam Whistle. Tried to get a job at Mill Street. And nobody would phone me back. And wow. So I started, went to grad school. And messed up, bro. Yeah, you done messed and, up. <laughs> And then I got a job at Amsterdam eventually. I just, I, they posted for an assistant brewer position. I mm-hmm. applied there. Where was this? At Amsterdam Brewing. I'm sorry, when? Yeah. Oh, when was this? Uh, 2000 and, oh God, seven, I think. Okay. So you've been doing yeah. a while, okay. Um, and 2006, 2007, something like that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so assistant brewer, sorry, I cut you off. Was yeah, I, mean, I, I quickly trained up and became a brewer there. Yep. Dropped out of grad school because I didn't want to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and, when you got this, why not, right? And uh, started brewing there full time. So I brewed there for about uh, four years. Met my business partner. Um, started home brewing around then as well, mm-hmm. just to play around with stuff that I was interested so in. So you didn't have any formal training before that? You were just uh, I learned, interested um, in home brewing? You learned there at Yeah, Amsterdam. I mean, I really, I think I got the job at Amsterdam because I had a, a scientific background and could understand it quickly. And yeah. they were looking for it to fill sort of that, that mm-hmm. niche. Um, and it's quite mechanically, I'm quite mad at mechanically inclined, so mm-hmm. I, I quickly started you know, involving myself in repairing stuff and installing equipment and stuff like that. So. Largely because I just, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to open my own brewery, and so yeah. you know, the more I could get my hands dirty, the better. Absolutely. Uh, sp- spent, uh, stayed there, and then decided to leave and start uh, a, a brew pub with another brewer um, who was who left there to start a brew pub. Uh, Mike, my business partner. Okay, cool. Um, so, so 2012 when was it started? You mean? Uh, 2012, yeah. So yeah. yeah, so I left in 2011 and committed myself full time to the Ballads project. And Amazing. Um, we opened up in 2012. That's and then, crazy. Yeah, so we were operated there. We just, we're still operating there, of course. Um, we operated there just as a brew pub, just in the ones. I don't know if you know how, how it's laid out behind yeah. there, but uh, there's like the brew pub and then mm-hmm. the bottle shop, and they're actually two separate buildings, yes. two separate yes. leases. So yeah. Yeah. The, uh, we started on just that brew pub side, operated like that for like six, seven months until we could get um, equipment into the other side, and then we moved, eventually moved our kitchen over, but immediately put tanks over there and opened a bottle, and that fed the bottle shop. So right. we, we had enough capacity to do that, and it's pretty much been like that since 2013. Um, only 
got easier this year because we can finally brew and we can transfer some product between locations. So mm-hmm. it makes the demand on Ossington a lot less and we can focus on doing really interesting stuff out of Ossington. So all the crazy stuff you've seen coming out is all almost all from Ossington. Okay. Oh, all right. Um, we do the, we, and then we, we can fill the gaps with the big, with the jutsu we do up here and mm-hmm. then we can make it very consistent. It's a larger, uh, well, like it's, it's a higher cell that's yeah, consistent, yeah. Like staple. What do you call it? Um, like a, like what, a the core regular, brand, core, I guess. I guess core yeah. Beer, that's mm. yeah, I mean we don't we do run out of it and stuff, and we have like Wizard Wars and like, you know Another one. a counterpart, right? Whether you like it or not. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you like it <laughs> <laughs> off camera, which like, I was just hating because Wizard Wolf is uh, clear, unhazy. Well, so a I'm little saying, bit hazy. It's, it's, it's like you know, not hazy enough. C and I have been fans from day one. Actually, we yes. were at your soft open the first week you guys opened because oh, we used yeah. to live up on Oz. Okay, yeah. So, Did you just, come to the tasting? That first tasting? I don't think we we're at a tasting. We okay. just showed up. It was the first week. You guys hadn't advertised yet. Okay. Yeah. We lived just up at Ossington and Bloor back in the day, okay. so we made our way. That's where I lived, yeah. That's yeah, time. yeah, so we yeah. lived on Northumberland Street. That's where is, I lived at the time. No. Yeah. You lived on the it's same street short, as us? Number yeah. two. What, we're Northern number two on the corner. Uh, so right at Ossington. Literally, yeah. well, we're like, right at Stone's throw from the station. Yeah, yeah so we were, the, um, I, we were the north side. I forgot, honestly. We're, I, north, I, we're on the north side as well. Yeah, but I was the next block over. So it was uh, the last, last house on the north side, right before Concord. Delaware. Between oh. Concord and Delaware. Dude. Oh, right there. Yeah, so like, you would have been able to see your house. Yo, yours. that's crazy. That's how they went to the same laundromat. That's where I was homebrewing. We were doing like developing And we were homebrewing in my basement right there. Yeah. So you were doing it better than us. And look and look where you are and look where we are. Now we're interviewing. We're talking you about it. You're making your it. beer is way better than what we could ever. To so Northumberland, there's something in that, Some, in that yeah, water, guys. Yeah, yeah. something Actually, in the water. There's a bunch of homebrewers around there. Really? I met a bunch of other guys up on Delaware. There's like a group of four people that I've, um, one of them ended up uh, working with us. But uh, wow. as a, as a, that's, crazy. that's really dude. cool. That's yeah, crazy. honestly crazy. I love that area. But yeah, that was yeah, uh, fantastic. Great, yeah. So we were just stoked because we started this in 2011. The not the podcast side, but I had, we had a little uh, blog. We'd you know, take the pictures and review and stuff. Like real super casual. So like, oh shit, there's one in the in the hoods, and we went down and. We were like, this is great. I remember just having, you guys had weird food. Like yeah. Yeah. jelly fish. Duck and, yeah. and we had <laughs> bone marrow. Duck, yeah. duck, duck hearts. hearts, that was yeah. Yeah. Duck tongue, we did have duck tongue yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, um, that's great. Why? why? Uh, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> yeah, my, <laughs> one of my best friends through the my through my whole life um, is Guy Rawlings, who's a chef um, at Montgomery's right now, at Queen and Ossington. Okay. Um, it, but he's a quirky chef. Um, and he sort of consulted with us on a temporary basis to open the kitchen and so he was the chef and he does he, he's into weird stuff he just like likes experimenting I think we opted for the, the fries that right. day but yeah. I think just because we <laughs> weren't feeling adventurous it. yeah I, we weren't going I, that I tend to yeah. be a little adventurous but he, I think he can, be, he can yeah. be intense his yeah. restaurant is excellent um, and some of the stuff like looks weird on like uh, his like a a braised, ca- uh, braised lettuce or something like that but it's, okay. like, it's actually it's, wicked yeah. <laughs> it's braised uh, lettuce it's something like that yeah something um, anyway it, like, he's he's always experimenting and the way that we approach beer he's sort of similarly he's approaches food right. he's, he's really um, really great chef that's um, awesome. he was nice enough to stay with us for six months and consult and so that, that menu sort of uh, left stayed with us as well for a while you know as, as the new chef took over nice and uh, adapted it to their own way and then we've, we have a chef Jay Brown there now who's been there for I think three years now. He's been okay. there for a while, uh, over two years, um, and he's amazing. Everything he puts out's um, like super, super great. I feel, I feel like he's one of the most underrated chefs because people go to Bellwoods for the beer, and that food's an afterthought. No right. one goes, you know, you're gonna go out for dinner. Um, you don't, you know, you're thinking about restaurants, right? Yeah. But he's he's got. He used to be the chef at Brockton General. Okay. So did Guy actually uh, prior to that, um, and sous chef at. Uh, Electric mud for a while. And like oh, he knows, nice. He knows his way around the kitchen and like, comes out with wicked stuff all the time. Never done. That's amazing. Yeah. I feel like people do associate food pretty heavily with brew pubs. Like they do. Yeah. You know what I mean, but, I mean, but not, not high end food, right? Like this. Like he. Like the, he makes a, yeah, like a house made squid and cavatelli with like a house fish stock and. Like okay, so that's seafood. Yeah. It's like it's all super high end ingredients. <laughs> yeah, that's and it's true. Like, I think it depends. You, you, you don't think you're gonna get that at a brew pub. I mean, you might no. get it, but it's like you might not, we're not thinking about where we're even getting all this stuff. And it's I don't know. I just feel like he's I think it depends on your brand. You guys are doing cutting edge, crazy, funky, weird beers. You expect the food to complement that, right? Yeah. Where if you're just true. having a Fair your run of the mill pale ale and and lager, you want more pub food, yeah. right? But yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I mean, absolutely not. Right. Sure. The fries are still He pulled the fried chicken to many people's. He pulled it off the menu. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, now you mentioned cutting edge. I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. So, like I said, we were aware of you guys back in the day. I, I you know, every time I came here, I, you know, I'd been to Bellwoods a handful of times, maybe. And then, 
I interviewed for the podcast. Unfortunately, Scott wasn't there. These blokes in uh, Montreal, Wild Shack, who are like some like kind of like professional home brewers in a sense. They do a lot of collaborations with like Sutton and Dunham and um, Scott's okay. Public and stuff. And we did a little episode of this thing we have called "What's in My Cellar." And I was looking in their cellar. The dude on the podcast wore was wearing a Bellwood hoodie, yeah. Bellwood hoodie, and I was like, okay. And he, in his cell, he had the bar now and like all this stuff, like a full That's shelf so just of Bellwoods. I was like, yeah. okay. And they were creaming over it, and they were the ones to be. Oh, we were talking about hazy beers because yeah. we're obsessed, and they were telling me about like, oh, Jutsu was like the haziest thing you can get. I was like, okay. Yeah. So I came back. We come back every month. Yeah. And last month, what is it now? It's April, so it was the end of March. We went to a show and we went, we're around the corner. We're like, oh, let's go to Bellwoods. It was like, it was like a Sunday night. Like, cool. So we went and I had this, I had Sista, Monogamy with the Idaho 7 mm, yeah. stuff. And I lost my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, this is not what not Bellwoods what he, was. Was, no. exactly. And like we were saying to you earlier before off camera that we just come back from Vermont and we're very much obsessed with and into the hazy beers right now. And I was like, this is not like what it used to be. So we've noticed and you could probably speak this is what I want you to speak to is that in Canada I don't feel like it's I don't know if it's a fault of the breweries or the uh, the people but I don't feel like people's palates have progressed to the level that they have in the states like you know states are generally ahead of us and even I'm from Australia so even back there everything people are just catching up right yeah so I don't know if you can speak to that like why are you guys taking the risk and making these type of beers and I mean, I think it, it's, it's it's a classic like American Canadian relationship too. Like, yeah. you know, we, like little every, brother, big brother type of thing. Well, Ish. yeah, and like you know, Americans like the you know we were saying that recently like the, the, their biggest exports is their culture. Like that's the, yeah, yeah, you know, it's true. <laughs> and uh, that just, that goes in beer as well. Like the you know the trend, and there's so many breweries. There's so many great breweries. There's yes. great breweries in Canada as well, but proportionately there there aren't. There's like right? 640 here I mean, and like 5,000 there. Yeah, I mean, just by numbers, you've got all, and you know, the, a lot of the craft beer culture started in the states, and yes. then you know, it can it can evolve so quickly because you got just numbers, right? You got yeah. so many breweries, you got so many great breweries, there's all the minds on it, and you know, it, it, it flows faster within the country, right? right? And that culture, I feel like, it eventually crosses the border. I mean, when we opened, like, I read an article about us recently and said that we were the first modern American style brew pub. Um, in Toronto, I mean, whether or not you believe I think, that, or I think whatever. I agree. I but think I know I agree. where they're coming from, and like, you know, what, what, what do they mean by that? Like, uh, when they say modern American, like, is in the, the cutting edge for like a brew pub that would try to do good food, for example. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, not that I mean, like, there are, there's great food at other brew pubs in Canada, so yeah. it's not a true statement, right? That even before we opened, um, so I don't necessarily agree with it, but you know, like they, we were trying to do like cutting edge beers and trying to keep up with that culture that's in the States. And, yeah. you know, that's, we, is, we, is we it, travel to the States all the time. And is it modeled Europe after an American style brew pub, would you say? Like, was that um, the intention or I is mean, that we were inspired just... by, I mean, I'd say like, you know, our inspirations are definitely down there. Like when, you know, like when I would go to like, I don't know, anywhere, mm -hmm. California, New York, uh, even just going to Buffalo to like, to get bottles of beer and you have yeah. all these crazy IPAs and, you know, you know, seven years ago or whatever. Pearl Street was at the... Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty trash, yeah. though. Yeah, that, like, yeah, I mean, I don't remember cool. great. Yeah, the venue was awesome. I mean, specifically, just, like, getting bottles. Oh, the sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, But to have, like, two hundred ale for the first time yeah, back then. Yeah, it's great, right? Yeah, it's yeah. great. It's like, holy shit, beer can be yeah. this like, aromatic, right? Right. Um, so you're traveling. This is, I guess, this is kind of answering part of the question. So yeah. you're actively traveling to all the places you said for inspiration. So if you yeah. went and you went to a place like, you know, like, we're always on about Vermont and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even, like I said, like, you know, um, other half, yep. sorry, is it? And um, places like that in New York or whatever, what made you feel that, like, was it just as a beer nerd, you were like, yo, I want to make these? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, it's the same way, way you, you guys go to Vermont. You just yeah. go because, like, what, what else do you want to do on vacation? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, you know, my, my trip's, my wife has to deal with I was going to say yeah. Our, yeah. Our, the ladies have to deal with well I mean you know like my, my wife's gotten into beer and she's like actually loves it now and she she wasn't before like I, you know I definitely didn't have much of a choice influence. well I, just, I yeah. mean she, she doesn't even really go for wine anymore though she'd much rather have like we, we do drink wine I, I drink wine yeah. but like she's just more interested in beer as I am just because you know association and of being immersed in the culture and everything yeah, yeah. Um, and we make good beer, but, you know, I, I feel. She no, thinks we do. make beer, so yeah, we, we, we end up drinking that. Pretty good. It's all right. um, Decent. But yeah, our family trips are like, we're, we're going to go on a family trip. To it's based around beer? Or? It's, it's, <laughs> it's based around Bellwoods and beer. Nice. Yeah, every time. I mean, yeah. we're, we're going to go on a road trip. That's the only way to do it, in my yeah. personal yeah. opinion. That's, yeah. That's what we yeah. do. Sorry, babe. Sorry about that. Oh, so no, we're going to I, Michigan. When I make like a route, it's like, it's okay, like, where's the brewery? But like, for sure. So like, I still feel like I want to know 
why you got because no one else has really taken the risk. Now I feel like I'm seeing a few more people doing milkshakes and they're, like they doing are, hazy they, beers. We, they are. But it's a, it's a slow roll. Like you guys all you of a jumped sudden, right into it, and all of a sudden yes. we're doing. Yeah. I come to the brew pub and like there was like, like this to me six, is this is no one's doing anything like this in no. from my understanding people in are Ontario. Out over this, people dude. are freaking well, out. Well, so it. The, but apparently out. they have like uh, there's a uh, it's like orange one. This one's in the Dominion City, I think. Oh yeah, they did one. Yeah, I had that. That's cool. I, I didn't have it actually, but I just saw that they did one. Uh, Left Field did Stone Laser City. Show. Yeah, Laser Stone Show. City. Oh, was it Vermont? Had... Was it Vermont? Oh, Vermont Stone, Stone, yeah. Yeah. Stone City. Stone City plays one? around and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I had. What else do we have that was hazy? I mean, uh, Duke this Box is Montreal. This is not uh, just hazy. Like uh, when we crack right? this, which we will very shortly. This Can't is it looks like no other beer you've ever had before. Right. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for breweries who are on the cutting edge, who are doing something different and new, and stuff I want to line up for because I did line up for this. I mean, so. Like on that point, like I, I do feel like the haze ass adds to the character jet suit and it's part of its character and it makes it you know, it helps make it that juice bomb. Like Witch Shark's like I uh, sorry, Milk Shark is like yeah, it's super hazy. I mean it's more of like a fun beer. Like yeah, we do we That's do make what I like it about super it. hazy. I'm not gonna chug pints and, you know, of it, but I'm gonna cherish every little snifter I have and yeah. Yeah. it's really good something it's different. Fun. No it's one's fun. no one's yeah, exactly. it's very fun. I love it. It's I just like my my favorite thing about Bell Woods is that you guys are like I feel like you're taking a risk. Do you, do you even see it as taking a risk by making beers like this? No. Because you've seen the lights. Yeah. Right. And we were talking with uh, Gord out the front earlier and we were just talking about trading beers. I got a few dudes in Vancouver and Alberta who were losing their minds telling me to get the milkshake. I'm like, bro, I can yeah. barely get it myself. Like, I can't get it for well, you. Well, he was like, trading 750 mil Cantillons for the, like, yeah, it's, that, it's, that. it's worth that people, much people in the beer world. So. But for, like, y'all are, over double the price. It's crazy. Yeah, yes. line, huh? crazy. So you guys are doing, what, Trillium and Treehouse and stuff at six hour lineups on a Tuesday morning uh, in, in Massachusetts. Yeah, we, yeah. Don't, we don't get that crazy. But, but it's on the way. My point is that, like, you guys are doing what these Americans are doing that I haven't seen any other Canadian Absolutely, I agree. breweries doing. So I'm okay. just curious as to like whether it was intentional, super intentional <laughs> or you're just like, like I don't know. I don't know. We just, just make amazing beers. Because you know it's like brewed and they'll come. I don't it's believe super, that. It's super, super loaded. Well, somewhat, but it I, is, but it is a lot of that. That is like, that's what it is. Th- I think that's the biggest point. I mean, really? we, eh? well, I feel like it's pretty loaded. Than it, that. It, like five years later. It's pretty loaded. Like I do think like, you know, we, we wanted to make the best beer we could. We had, you know, you travel and, we don't give a shit about consistency either, which helps. Because, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, I like that. That's the name of the episode. Well, yeah. it, 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 <laughs> with the disclaimer, I mean, we're, we're looking for a good beer and having a good beer experience. And, but if and it changes we, we can time. do things consistently, we do, but like that's not our point. We're, like, we, Wizard, Wizard Wolf's changed, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wizard Wolf's changed, uh, you know, it's changed a lot since yep. uh, we, we first started doing it, like, what, three years ago? Jutsu changed a lot. I mentioned that, um, you know, like, we're not looking for a consistent product that, like, won't change over five years. We're looking right. for, like, well, what's Jutsu? To me, it's, like, it should be, like, a hazy juice pump. Right. So let's do the best hazy juice pump we can. If we have to change the hops, the yeast, whatever, we'll do it. I love that. So if the trends change, would this be a change? So say if it moves back to the West Coast. Crystal right now, clear. Like, maybe there'll be crystal. someone. Well, we, we make it like a crystal clear uh, Pilsner. Traditional Pilsner. You have the, the, the dry hop Pilsner? Yeah. What's that called? Paper Tiger. I've never that had was it. Lit. You, do you have it here? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, <gasps> I had that. Went the same night. Yeah. They were okay. the four sea star jutsu. Yeah. Oh, um, that's great. That, I love that beer. I lost yeah. my mind. Yeah. I love that beer. It's great. But I feel like it's coming back. I feel like a lot of the haze dudes. Yeah. And I come to the guys in Vermont. It's easing back off the haze. I like easing back. Yeah. I don't know if they do a lot of hazy pale ales and stuff, but they... They're certainly in that culture. Um, Interesting. They're, they're holding a traditional Pilsner festival in July. Uh, really? July 15th. So. Where are they based out of? Uh, Portland, Oregon. Oh, sorry, Portland, Maine. Maine. Portland, Maine, yeah. Think about that. It's not too yeah. far. Let's think about it. We might actually You guys be out there? We might be. To visit uh, or to participate? Participate. If, yeah. Yeah, if we can get some paper tiger ready. Damn, ready. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So, yeah, it's just really curious to me that, like, I'm, like, we're saying, seeing a few of the breweries coming in. Um, doing these type of beers, but you guys just seem to be very much leading the way. And it's, it's, so, from what you're saying, then it's an organic, just like beer fan. You want to drink this type of beer, so uh, that's what I'm going to do. And it's fun. I mean, we want to we want to stay relevant. We stay, on, you know, try to keep involved in what's exciting in the beer world. Try that, man. Yeah, I mean, we were, like I had the first. Uh, so I had a lactose. Um, I forget what it's called, but it was an Amipolo lactose strawberry IPA. Okay. Um, that really I really loved. Um, Sort of, sort of banked it. No, well, initially, yeah, yeah. But, but it sort of banked that in the back of my mind, and then it sort of didn't re- That was like two years ago. All right. Um, and then uh, I don't think it was like a super haze bomb. I think it was just like a. It was a lactose. 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 Are they called milkshake? Yeah. Uh, milkshake. I don't ones. think he called it a milkshake on that one, but I might be wrong. I, I don't even know what it was called. I forget. Um, and then I sort of just banked it. I just remember that as being like, I, I think Omnipolo was like definitely like the forefront of 
the, like lactose milkshake really yep. and stuff like that. And they started to do these collabs with uh, Tired Hands. And so I tried the oh. Tired Hands pineapple milkshake when I was Maybe that's who I'm thinking of then, who, who kind of like with American. For sure. It's kind really, of the two of them that really, invented yeah. the style. Yeah, it was a collab yeah. at Tired right. Hands. And those were the ones that really blew up on, that was on Instagram at least. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, that, yeah. That, that's where we're seeing it, yeah. right? That's yeah. why we're so excited, of, like yeah. we were saying before, about Treehouse. Pouring these just, glasses of orange juice. Yeah. I'm like, oh and they do that pour that like goes right to the rim. No head. I'm like, oh my God, stop it. Looks so pretty. We always split them, so I never get to have a full pour. Um, <laughs> I love the uh, I love the reactions for that though, like the split. Like some people, it's funny, right? Like, yeah, it's, again, it's just yeah. like who the fuck would pour their beer like that? Yeah, like, I can't. Look cool for photos. It's, it's like it's what are you gonna do? Looks amazing. Yeah, hold my hair back while I, you know. Like, it's, yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. People get like, why would you? Be, so, so, like, I see the, uh, someone commented on like other house posters. Randomly saw it. It's like. What, why the hell would you pour your beer like that? It's, it's <laughs> a disgraceful. Because it looks it's pretty. Like, you know, it's a horrible trend in the industry. And like, you know, people <laughs> the purest. Are, the purest, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes me want to do it. Yeah, of course, right? It's going to piss you off, God damn it. Yeah. You guys ready to start the next yeah. one? Yeah, sure. I do. think we should. Um, uh, I don't yeah. have a rinse for you, but ah, that's I don't think again. you'll notice it's pretty good. Nah, it's pretty good. Baby, you ready? Oh, Lord. So I have had this. See, you have not had this. Um, I most certainly have not. Yeah, it's you uh, get in there. It is get fun. In. It is a fun. Yes, beer. yes, get in there, bastard. <laughs> yeah, I've been pretty ready for this one, man. Yeah, I was um, mind blown by the uh, pineapple. And it was yeah. really good. We when we did the video, I had a bunch of people at the crib at the time. Yep, and it was really cool because thank you, baby. Um, everyone we had like a, we've been introducing a lot of our uh, friends to to you know to craft beer and stuff. Mm -hmm. Really, anyone who's drinking like any of the trash would just like no. Girl. Stop yeah. sorting them out. But everyone um, got excited. Even non beer drinkers got non -beer excited about this beer. Really? Yeah. My boy, yeah. like, he was like, he drank pineapple with us. He, like, when he saw the, the blackberry, he was like, like, bro, I need that beer. <laughs> so I'm gonna save one to split with him when we um, get back. Actually, I wanna do this one. I'm gonna review it just because I want the photo with you in that yeah. one. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. That's That would make serious. more sense, right? Yeah. If you guys held up the beer yeah. there. So Everyone open your mouth. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> Backwards snapbacks and beers. <laughs> Okay, that, at least has to That's be. That's legit. Yeah, we'll, we'll make that work. <laughs> well, All right, gentlemen and ladies. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, oh, bro. Like, what? It's like, that, that's, <laughs> it's like custom made for you. Oh, my God. I don't know why. I'm so easy to please. I'm such a little, like... <laughs> Soft, because I, I wanted to drink that unicorn frappuccino from the oh my, god, oh my god, god. You, you would. would. <laughs> I did it, didn't it? You That's would. This is my beer frappuccino. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, oh my the, god. Uh, that one that the beer's Omni Pole is doing with like the meringue on top. No. Oh, fuck, Actual I meringue. Phone. I don't. I don't know what the fuck. I think it's like beer <laughs> foam or something. Like I, what? I haven't really dug into it. So I think it was like it's like a beer meringue. That guy, man. <laughs> so anyways, I, I don't. I need to know him. This <laughs> is. Yeah. Uh, it's beer, but it's not. It's like a beer smoothie. The Definitely mouth like feel on smoothie. it is intense. It's sour. It's sweet. There's a nice little lingering bitterness. That looks. Oh my good. god, that is crazy! Right? Look that up. I think it's on the polo. What's it called? Uh, say what it's called. Uh, unicorn. Unicorn. Oh, it's called a unicorn. Yeah. I think it's because of the yeah. Because of that frap. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna show you. Always Wakefield. Yeah. Have you guys considered moving into the states now that you have a bit more production and? Um, I think it's inevitable that we'll do like small shipments and into so the into. Do well. Um, yeah, really well. Very well. well uh, and that'll be a problem for him in a good way. Like, it's going to ruin. Whenever we start. Like, We're never so going to get any of your beers ever. No, ever. no yeah. I, I wouldn't Soon say that ever. at all. I mean, we love making hoppy beers. Um, I can't see us ever exporting to the States any of our hoppy They don't last long. They, oh, right. For a freshness factor, right? Like, I mean, they didn't. Good point. Which instantly. we're learning very but, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. What if freshness is. Yeah, the freshness is a whole other conversation. Yeah. That, those beers should be had super fresh. Yeah, okay, so you're of that mind state? Absolutely, yeah. But we that said, we do tons of beers that age well. And, like, Jelly King, even, is a hoppy beer. It is. But it's still a sour. It is a sour. And, so it'll age and, better, though. Um, or it last dry longer because of the sourness? I mean, I don't know about better, right. it, but uh, it, it, I've had year-old Jelly King, and I, I like it. I'm, I'm happy Different, have, though. It does slightly yeah. change. Um, yeah. Like, perhaps we do have some bread in there, so the bread, you know, starts to uh, produce some esters and yeah. aroma, and yeah. the hop maybe die back a bit. But even the hop aroma seems to really um, age well in that beer, hmm. whereas our hoppy, like our pale ales. Like Jutsu or Sea stuff? Yeah, they just start like... to, the hop character dies back, the malt character goes up, and it's like, 
not, not what you want. What's the optimal uh, in your personal I'm, opinion? Because everyone yeah. has a basically right. at the end of the day, it's subjective. Yeah, totally. From your like your tastes for your beers, whether it's say like in that or even um, yeah. we've had Ghost Orchid before, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Also quite yeah, like what's, what's your best before window? Yeah, what's your yeah. like window? You know, to, um, yeah, it's not an easy thing to. I mean, we we debate it all the time and how to even address that. Um, I would say roughly uh, out of half is two two months. It seems like if you have it within two months, it's that's a little that's longer. A long time. Yeah. That's a really long time. I'm and, talking and that's, Eddie's that's like assuming, two weeks. Yeah, yeah I'd say two weeks done. to a month. Yeah, yeah. So In I, my do, opinion. I do but have a different opinion yeah. about Ossington though, because we found oh. we've had get way better fills at Hafis and with less oxygen introduction. And oh, okay. I, I think the oxygen is it, it ruins the, it ruins the hospital. Is, is, is that based on equipment or procedure yeah, or equipment? Yeah, and we just have better equipment up here. And like if we do like hoppy beers packaged the same day, yeah. you, you taste the one at Ossington deteriorate so quickly. Nine and days, I think that's, yeah. a, personally, I think that's a huge problem with like the can culture because a lot of people have canning lines that don't actually eliminate air very well. Right. And so the, like the best before, yeah, like two weeks. I've had, um, I've had cans from a great brewery in the States that I know was a good beer when it's packaged. Right. It was, I believe it was only two weeks old and it was like, it wasn't great. Yeah. It wasn't what it It was or could be. I didn't believe that it was what it was when it was packaged. Do you guys do best before dates? We had a conversation about this. We don't. Um, Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, we don't. Um, or not even best before like canning or, or when, when it is bottled, bottled or canned or is it like I know some people just put like a little printed label actually on the yeah on I the mean our, our, our angle was to promote drinking things fresh so we right. always have a drink fresh icon we don't That's export cool. do any of age. our hoppy beers so yeah. you, people um, unless you're trading it or something like that people do generally know when they're buying our beer um, anything that's sold in our store, we're confident. And it's at, at there we don't sell fresh it. As it can be. Yeah. We sell things quickly, so we of don't course. we don't brew enough to keep it on the shelf for right. longer than we. Um, like, uh, we we never have two month old beer. In I think our, that's a, you want a proper yeah, representation of the beer. You don't want someone drinking it three months, four months old, and it's not it's not how the beer is supposed yeah. to taste. It's you know it's. More for them, I understand where you're coming from. For you, wouldn't sell it. Yeah. But like sometimes, like when we, without calling names, we were we interviewed a brewer in Vermont who was adamant that they put the canning date on the bottom, and he was telling us about another Everyone very should be popular doing it. brewery right. that, that doesn't do it. it. Yeah. And then I understand why now. I'm very conscious of uh, things not being date stamped mm. when it can, not like best before or whatever. Like that's fine. But like when, when, when it's bottled, because then I use your own discretion, knowing exactly. this is two months old. Okay, it's going to taste maybe a little different than if it's a week off the can. That's line, it. Right? And yeah. say like Heady Top, which we've talked about this before. Like I, I've had it. We've had it fresh. And so it's different. Incredible. You yeah. have it up to about two weeks. Two in weeks my, in starts, our opinion. Yeah, I and agree. then it's done for. I've had it like not done for, two but it, start, it starts. It's just not what it was. Like you're sure. saying, yeah. and yeah. It, you want that. You want to burp, and you have that like hops like traveling through your nasal passages. Yeah. To me, that's what I'm after. It's a part yeah, of the totally. experience. And um, I they, do find they don't I do find our hoppy beers on a good at, at Ossington. We don't. I don't. It seems like two weeks is totally realistic. Mm-hmm. All the beer that we produce there is sold within a week anyway. And um, probably consumed. I've had Hafis within, it's sold within three weeks, I would say, uh, okay. in general. Um, and it would be and honestly, I don't, fairly fast, would you say? Yeah. yeah I, people I, I, aren't exact. Yeah. I mean, people know who are buying these beers. They know it's not. And we kept we keep them all refrigerated you know the whole time as well. And right, it, right. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's the goal is to get someone to consume it quickly. Um, I'm not opposed to going towards dates. I don't know. We just haven't um, – we decided to just go with the – drink fresh things and but and that seems to be working no one's it seems to be well people complain no matter what <laughs> you can't win right yeah so look man that's about it thank you so much yeah. for your time man really appreciate it um we can find you online at bellwoods beer at bellwoods beer everywhere bellwoods uh so yeah on social our social bellwoods beer yeah so check them out by the time you see this the uh the new milk sharks will probably be come and gone ready to go or we're probably doing more stuff though you yeah. keep doing Sweet. them yeah. let the people know so, uh, yeah, man, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Pleasure. Thanks, Luke, man. Appreciate thank it. You.